So when Defiance first came out with their QQQY, I was pretty excited and I bought into it um, in a big way uh, because I saw a distribution rate of uh, something over 60%. And as of uh, November 30th, their latest distribution, they're still distributing at over 60%, 60.52%. And also what's exciting is that, that they actually distribute uh, monthly. So you're actually compounding monthly. If you get those dividends every month and put them back into the uh, fund, uh, that's on a monthly basis, which is really nice. And so um, I was pretty excited because I came to this uh, uh, investor.gov uh, compound interest calculator. I put in 100000 and uh, no additional monthly contribution, uh, length of time 20 years, and uh, estimated interest I put in 60.52 to match their current, uh, what they're currently doing. Uh, compound frequency is monthly because they're paying monthly. And then I said, okay, in 20 years I will have uh, 13 billion dollars. Right, that's not million, that's billion, 13 billion dollars on a hundred thousand dollar investment uh, if you're getting an interest rate of 60.52 uh, percent compounded monthly and you put everything back uh, into the uh, fund so that's that's quite a retirement 13 billion uh, from a hundred thousand so that's pretty exciting so I thought well let me compare that to QQQ so I went to the Invesco QQQ website uh, you know, QQQ has been around for over 20 years, um, so they have a pretty good track record, and they have a uh, calculator here. So I put in 100,000, uh, 20 year investment duration, and this is actually what would have happened if you invested 100,000 20 years ago in QQQ, you would have 1 million. Uh, over 1 million dollars, 1 million 289 thousand. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, hold it. If um, okay, so you know, obviously, I rather have um, the 13 billion than the uh, 1 million. Okay, 13 billion versus 1 million. So then I started to compare it uh, to um, QQQ because obviously, if you're going to end up with 13 billion in 20 years versus 1 million. You're going to have to do a lot better than QQQ. So here's QQQ. QQQ is the candlesticks here. And QQQY is the line here. And you can see since QQQY started September 14th, we don't have a lot of time to go by. But so far, they are down 12.59%. Uh, now, I know what you're saying. Well, you got to include the dividends. So we hit this button here, adjust data for dividends, which, which uh, adjusts it for the monthly dividends, and then uh, boom, it changes it completely. So now we're up 3.1%. However, QQQ is up 3.86%. So even with all the dividends reinvested right now, uh, the QQQY is not beating uh, QQQ. So now I'm getting really curious because, well, how are they going to come up with, you know, those billions if QQQ is coming up with just a million? And QQY reinvesting all the dividends, at least so far, is not beating them. And I wanted to uh, have more uh, information. So I noticed that the gentleman that does this, Jay, has a number of interviews on YouTube, and um, he uh, he he also does uh, Tesly, which you can see here when I move my mouse away. T S L Y seventy percent yield. So I thought, oh, that's pretty good. T S L Y. He does that yield max and defiance. So yeah, I went to Tesly's website, and sure enough. 60% distribution rate. So this is very comparative to QQQY. Same type of thing, same, same range, 60 plus percent. So I said, okay, well, um, 
Tesly, T-S-L-Y, has a much longer track record. So here, QQQ, again with the candlesticks, and I got Tesly with the uh, line here, this uh, kind of gold colored. And this is back since the inception of Tesly. And so this goes back, you can see down here when I mouse over it, November 23rd, 2022. And so if you go uh, through here, you see that Tesla has dropped um, since inception 41%. At the same time, since inception, QQQ has gone up 36%. So again, not uh, exactly beating QQQ. And again, you say, well, what about the dividends? Because they're paying 60% per month dividends. So we adjust data for the dividends by coming down here. And now Tesla does substantially better from negative 40 something percent to a 1% gain. But still, if you compare that over the time they launched to here versus the Qs, you're at 37% versus 1%. So I'm thinking, well, I would much rather earn 37% than 1%. So something is not... Um, stacking up exactly because um, you know they're saying they're going to pay 60 percent but obviously uh, I, with, with the nav erosion as they call it i'm not getting uh, full 60 percent because if i was i'd be doing substantially better uh, than uh, qqq uh, and so then i also had a thought and this is my last thought on this which is you know, if you're in a taxable account, which I am, it's an individual account, at least one of my accounts is, I have a, some, some retirement accounts too, but if you're in a taxable account, the uh, ordinary dividends, according to Investopedia, are taxed at income tax rates. Uh, so you have a maximum tax a bracket of 37% on these dividends. Uh, so then I'm thinking when I look at these comparisons and it shows Tesla being just just barely up one percent investing all dividends I say that's great but what happens if I lose 20 or 30 percent of the dividend each month to taxes I know I don't have to pay it to the end of the year but you'd still have to pay it and so that obviously is going to return uh, substantially reduce the return if you want to set aside the dividends for taxes or you're paying your taxes uh, quarterly or something like that. But anyway, the point is that um, I think if you're in an individual account, you're not going to be positive because you're just barely positive here. If you're an individual account, you take the taxes uh, out of the distribution. You can see how much difference the distribution makes. If you take 20 or 30 percent out of that, it's probably going to fall back into the negatives. All right, so if I'm missing something, uh, if I'm doing something wrong, let me know uh, in the comments. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just uh, curious. I know there's a lot of excitement around QQQY. I keep seeing videos about how great it's going to be and how good it is, and a lot of excitement about Tesla, at least when it first came out. And I'm not seeing it. When I go to the charts, I just, I just don't see, uh, see that type of return. I understand where the excitement's coming from. I was pretty excited too when I went to the compound interest calculator and saw 13 billion. But the reality is quite different because of the um, uh, price decline. You really overall don't end up, uh, to me it seems like at least, but tell me if I'm wrong, doing better than just investing in uh, the the Qs, which has, you know, a 20 year track record and 20 plus year track record and is doing rather well. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye now.